Planet X that have been talked about almost like a fable for so many generations, so many years. And, of course, people that have done great amount, uh, some money, uh, huge amounts of money vanished. So it, I realized after uh, tapping back into old resources and even going back into some of my own files where I had people talk to me about underground facilities way back in the 90s, and one thing led to the other, and it became the connecting of the dots of politically, scientifically, financially, and every other thing that seems to affect us on a regular basis. It all went in one direction, and that was the realization that the mystery Planet X that had been talked about almost like a fable for so many generations, so many years, and of course, people that have done great amount, uh, some, some folks that have spent their entire lives dedicated to studying uh, the, all the old scriptures of all around the entire globe going back 4,000, 2,000, 3,000 years, and the realization that Planet X was a real item, that it was genuinely in a huge, apparently a huge elliptical orbit, and was on its way back in. And that was, uh, according to my information, it was discovered about 1983 in terms of being a discovery in Washington, D.C. by President uh, Reagan and, of course, Vice President Bush, uh, who was actually the president uh, during Reagan's time, too. But uh, the bottom line being that someone at that point in time came in and said that huge infrared telescopic satellite that we sent out to the fringes of the solar system uh, has just broke everybody's bubble because the planet Nibiru, planet X, does exist, and it appears that it's on its way back in. So sometime during that period of time in the early 80s, uh, the uh, powers to be, so to speak, I refer to them as the bad guys and the shadow government, they sat back and they said, uh-oh, if this is real, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. How bad is it? When's it going to come? If it's coming in 100 years, we don't care. But, but we're, now we're talking in, in only 20, 30, 40 years that this is going to be coming back, and it is coming back. Uh, so I have studied uh, a multitude of uh, astronomers uh, uh, that have studied it. All of those research has been done. And, it, and I came to my own shocking conclusion that... Uh, Planet X Nibiru is a reality. And uh, the bottom line is the United States has built all these unbelievable underground facilities as survival facilities for the limited few that are going to be allowed in underground. Uh, today's news that you even mentioned, uh, talking about making movements with the equipment. Oh, amazing at, uh, story. At, at the Cheyenne Mountain. Mm-hmm. Now, now, that's in our DVD that uh, we completed, of course, about six months ago. That's in our report. Um, the bottom line is they moved stuff out of there several, about two years ago or a year and a half ago. And they, they made alterations and changes. They have just converted that into what amounts to being one of the primary out of a hundred of them underground in the United right. States. That's going to be one of the primary hideaways. Uh, but it's interesting because what they're saying now is they're expanding it or building it, you know, putting in uh, updated equipment, et cetera, because they had actually moved all of that out about a year and a half ago, and that's a, a part of that's in our uh, DVD. But what has also happened since the last time we spoke, uh, which is about, whatever, four or five months ago, I guess, last time I was talking with you about this, uh, many things that I had, in fact, predicted in our DVD has, in fact, uh, taken place. Uh, that is, of course, uh, the uh, a tremendous increase in sky activity. What I mean by that is uh, the, the planets starting out by Pluto and coming inward are all changing in the facial, uh, the external chemistry structure. They're all heating up and they're being aggravated by something. Uh, some of these are, uh, has been going on now, you know, for about a year, uh, but that's all, uh, actually, a lot of news releases on that. But the bottom line is, of course, it's not in the regular news. You have to kind of flip over the page.
pages and roll over some rocks and look uh, look around to find some of these uh, uh, actual news reports. So what we have is all the planets are being irritated by something. The sun now. And people. Pe people, too, are getting irritated, Bob, by something. I mean, it, it's oh, yeah. bizarre, but something's happening. Yes. And, and, uh, and, you know, it's easy when you get... You can fall into a trick bag when you do a study like I ended up doing, because ordinarily I wouldn't touch uh, the planet X with a 50-foot pole, uh, you know, because it was something rather fell into the fanciful direction. But when I got into the nuts and bolts of the politics, changing their entire space programs a few years ago, putting these underground facilities, filling them up with the survival foods to the extent that the average a guy had trouble buying that for the last two or three years because the primary contracts were, were going to the government for all of the freeze-dried stuff mm -hmm. and what have you. Uh, the underground facilities we're talking about, I have a list of them on my website. Uh, they're, they're, some of them are really huge. And then when I found out that in Russia uh, in 2010, they put out a mandate to create 5,000 smaller underground facilities, which they did accomplish by 2015, by the beginning of this year. Uh, they've, uh, they've, they've accomplished that. Uh, they have, uh, some of them are large, but a, a large quantity of are what we would call smaller facilities. Now, all at the same time, the things that, see these are the dots that people couldn't figure out exactly what was going on, like, supplying military weapons and equipment and buying billions with a B of bullets and uh, for, to, to supply small weapons to all the sheriff's departments and the police departments around the country. And of course, troop carriers, hand grenade, hand grenade launchers, and things of that type into our police uh, uh, facilities. Everybody said, what's going on with that? Why are they buying so many weapons and bullets and machine guns and things of that sort that you could actually fight a war, a World War IV, a three, four, and five. Uh, you know, it's an extraordinary enough, sure. amount of weapons. FEMA just so, contacted one of my clients. They they produce storable food, and they wanted to buy up the entire inventory. Yes, and they have been doing that. See, and their target has not been. That these are the things get really spooky when I got into this. Uh, you know, you can always say, well, they're doing it for this, or it's down the road, or they're worried about something else or what have you. And everything points to one thing, and that is an intergalactic, unbelievably serious event taking place. If the wealthiest elite of the world are digging holes for themselves to hide in, and have been filling them with the foodstuffs like you're talking about, the food foodstuffs for five, six years now, you couldn't buy them. You couldn't get enough because the contracts were all obligated to the government. And the reason for the, uh, they have now also uh, uh, something that's been banging around the uh, uh, the internet like crazy, all right, is the, the upcoming planned uh, exercise to take place it's sort of a synthetic martial law that uh, is to be done uh, by all of the military sources cooperatively under Homeland Security sometime between June and September. Uh, and this is something that's slowly been coming out, and uh, it has a name. I think it's, uh, uh, I, I don't have it in front of me, it's not something I, uh, but it's a, uh, uh, you know, it's got a regular title for it at this point in time. Uh, it's called uh, uh, Helm something, whatever. I can't think of it at this point. But uh, but it is a real event that people are picking up on. Now, what this is, it's basically a dry run for martial law. And, of course, again, everybody says, well, you know, why, what is it? I wonder what, you know, why would they even be doing this? Uh, why are they practicing it and educating the general police forces to, to, to handle this. What What's the idea with that? Well, they're going to, here's, everybody asks, they say, when will the government tell us about the 
the incoming of Nibiru. Uh, it's called Operation Planet Jade Day. Helm 15. Jade Helm, that's what it is. I couldn't think would save my life. And, and that is a dry run preliminary on martial law. The bottom line is this. The people that are in control at this point in time uh, have their hands in our, our budget and can take and do the, what they wish with the money and have been creating hideouts for themselves underground, 103 of them, give or take, all right, they will never be able at any time come forward on the news and say, hey, we have bad news. A planet's going to come back around in a couple of months, and it's going to create complete global destruction right like uh, Noah's floods, which I mm -hmm. believe Noah's floods was, in fact, uh, Nibiru on one of its earlier paths. And in order to keep government alive, we have decided to move underground, but you can't go. Right. And the only way, yes, I mean, if you just apply logic to this uh, whole situation with buying the bullets and, and getting ready for martial law, going underground, changing the uh, space administration, the whole, the whole thing has been changed in 20 years. Uh, as, and lying to us about all kinds of ridiculous reasons for buying equipment and things. Uh, when all of that, the bottom line is, if the people knew ahead of time, it would be complete global havoc and riots. There's no way to, that you can present this to the average person in a manner such that's going to keep them from not going completely out of control. So... They're going to have to, at one point in time, the um, uh, Planet X Nibiru is going to be visually seen on the horizon, up in the sky. It's going to be a new star. It will appear originally as a singular star. Even though it's a large planet, five times, calculated to be five times the size of Earth, and carrying with it four or five moons that travels around it like its own little star, solar system itself, and additionally, of course, the, the unbelievable tail, like in the tail of a comet, like Halley's Comet, that has a 24 million mile tail. That's just a frozen snowball that comes around every 75 years. We have no idea how big the tail of space debris is going to be dragging behind no. the Biru, and when it comes... We're going to travel through it at least twice when it comes in to go around the sun and then back out again. We will, under our regular orbit of going around the sun, we will, in fact, go through it twice. And going through that tail is going to be uh, an experience uh, that uh, no one's going to want to... Uh, uh, and I, I suspect, through. Bob, we've gone through this before in earlier history of this, this planet. That's correct. And I don't, again, I'm the messenger on this thing. Um, I'm an expert in certain areas of predominantly corrupted politics, if you will, but the, I have the ability to put A, B, and C together. Sometimes it, you just have to get your prejudice set aside and just say, you know, uh, I have to really look at this through clear glasses. What in the world would cause these people to stop stealing money from their own pocket and start building hideouts. Uh, and so, again, I tapped into those guys and organizations that have studied this thing for years and years. Uh, and uh, a fellow named Gil Broussard is one gentleman that has a, a wonderful uh, uh, investigative uh, research on this. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Marshall Masters has been chasing this for many years. And the bottom line, what they've discovered, and many, many, many other people, including uh, people that have been eliminated because they were high-level astronomers that were told to keep their mouths shut, and they are now deceased uh, because they didn't keep their mouths shut. But the bottom line is, you're correct. It has been around. There is a debate between, let's say, Group 1 and Group 2, as to whether uh, it's a 3,600-year elongated orbit or if it is a lesser orbit of about 
350 or 360 years. In that case, obviously, simple mathematics, that it would have been here 10 times in passing around mm -hmm. close to uh, the Earth uh, if, in fact, it's on a shorter orbit. But the agreement is, of course, the approximate date that has been calculated by these folks who have done extraordinary, uh, uh, some of the, uh, the studies that have gone back, you know, studying the, uh, uh, let's say, the Egyptian writings, the Tibetan monks on the top of the Himalayas, the writings that they've done, the emperors of the ancient Chinese, where they actually followed this thing. They called it the, the visiting star or the red dragon, and they actually followed it in their own scriptures and wrote these things down. And you can now you can actually verify most of these events to be true and correct times. In other words, you can verify pretty much when it had passed. So the question was, and these guys, have, again, I'm not the astronomer. I don't pretend to be an astronomer, but I understand it. And the bottom line is uh, that it has come by. It has been logged in in the diaries of these ancient cultures, in the Bible. It's described in biblical writings. And the bottom line is that they have, uh, it has come around. It's caused floods like Noah's floods, which was actually one of them, one of the fastest. Has it, it caused was, the winter we had in, in the, the Northeast this year? The winter, absolutely. And then, see, I put that in our DVD, which, by the way, it's, a, it's very large. It's a double DVD, four hours, because we did cover every aspect four of Vatican's hours? involvement wow. and all of them. That's a long and, uh, Well, and then what we put in there, as a matter of fact, which is uh, amazing, was I, I, I had just analyzed it and I said the winter of 2015 that we've just been going through, I said it's going to be the craziest, the worst winter the United States had had in hundreds of years because of Nibiru. Now we have today President Obama mentioned the fact in, a, in an interview with, I think it was CBS, a sit-down interview, he was talking about the climate change. Well, it's not basic. It's not because we were smoking too much. It's not because we had too many smokestacks coming out of the factories and all. The climate change is taking place because of Nibiru's effect. But let's not talk more on... about that. Hold on, Bob. We'll talk about that climate change effect. And we'll take phone calls next on Coast to Coast. Day. Nibiru, Planet X. What kind of catastrophe when it comes by? We'll continue talking with Bob Fletcher about that, and we'll take your calls on Coast to Coast AM. Welcome back. Bob Fletcher with us. We'll take your calls. His DVD is called Incoming. Bob, you discovered some kind of warning from the Space and Science Study Group that was sent to the president. Can you tell us about that? Yes, that was kind of interesting. Uh, like many of them um, uh, that have 